Moses, the Wheatland Extreme, managed to scrape their way into the playoffs, but now they're facing some pretty stiff competition. Yeah, tough test. The undefeated Vermilion hmm. Roar. Uh, they clearly went 14 and 0, uh, solid on all ends. Uh, wow. Very, uh, very depth-wise in terms of uh, their scoring and everything else. But it was definitely a barn burner, Getting as usual, between <laughs> these two teams, the Vermilion Roar and Wheatland Extreme, met at Vermilion Stadium for a do-or-die one-game playoff over the weekend. The Extreme would get on the board first. It would be Brendan Peterson who would find Ty Wright for the put away. The Roar would respond like they always have. Captain Randy Simmons pulls out some great stick handling moves here to beat Jesse Robinson. And just after that, Simmons finds crowd favorite Randy Brown. That wakes up one of the most skilled players in the league. This is guy, or this is a guy you do not want to mess with, Brandon McAllister. He barges through the roar defense uh, that scored, or at least allowed three goals a season to Nasha score up. Then on the penalty kill, goes coast to coast, schooling three roar defenders. And you eventually bury one past Colton Batke, the extreme lead 6-5 after a period. To the second, the roar cut into the deficit. Dustin Todd shows some great individual effort, grabbing the loose ball twice, then scoring while being knocked over, tied at seven. They're heading to the dressing room tied at 10. After that, the teams kept this one close. The Roars, Zach Grant puts the low ball past Robinson with 155 left. Roar up 14-13. Right after that, following faceoff, McAllister leading the extreme into enemy territory. Keaton Merger fires a rocket past Batke. All squared up, 146 left. Roar with the following possession. A collision sends the ball bouncing everywhere. Randy Simmons comes out with it, dishing to Joey Ravery, who scores with a buck 11. The Roar advanced to the final with a 15-14 oh, exactly victory. exactly how I thought it was going to be a tight game for sure. I mean, Kit Scotty being our rivals, it is going to be a game for sure, hell of a battle. I give my hats off to Vermillion. It was an absolute great game. Best game I've ever played in my whole junior career. Just un unbelievable. It's sad to... It's had to be done, but, you know, this game, I'm glad it was this game. Turning our attention to rugby, the Lloydminster Reapers men's squad were in action this weekend, hoping to keep their playoff hopes alive, which they did 54-14 to over the Saskatoon Gophers. With a recap, here's Emmett Murphy. It was just the third home game of the season for the Orange and Black. The local turf had done little for the club before this weekend, having dropped their previous matches. This time around, the Reapers were in complete control of the game from the get-go. They scored nine tries to run over the Saskatoon Gophers. Both teams were playing with shortened benches, but Reapers veteran Jeff Noble gave credit to the team's dedication to training for giving them the upper hand. We get a lot of commitment. We get a lot of new guys that are that are stepping up and playing big roles, and it's starting to show. Uh, our practices are paying off because it, it's it's hard to play in the heat of the, the day like this. The Reapers' next game is scheduled for next Saturday at four against the Saskatoon Wild Oats at ES Laird. As for the CJS Cold Tubing Reapers women's team, they went one and two this weekend in the Stampede Seven tournament in Calgary. And now to another sport. It was a battle of the undefeated. The Lloydminster Vandals have been on cruise control the first three games, but this past weekend was a tougher test for the Border City Bunch. They were in Calgary taking on the Wolf Pack. The Vandals come out with a 10-point victory in the Wolves' den to remain undefeated and take sole possession of first place in the league. The Vandals are now back home this Saturday against the Edmonton Army. Now to the Lloydminster Rebels. And they've had an up-and-down week at the Canada Cup in B.C. After a hot start, the team trailed off and they fell into the loser bracket, which meant a long journey to the finals for the local girls. The Rebels fell just short against the Delta 97s, losing 6-4. to four. The girls worked to the bone in this week, playing 11 games total, winning seven of those contests, including four mercies in a row. They just missed the podium with a fourth-place finish. Well, to baseball locally tonight, the Meadow Lake Sox at 10 and 2 take on the Lloydminster Juniors. This game was postponed from last week. They're playing at Wallace Field tonight at 6:30. Meanwhile, at Legion Ball Park tonight, the Midwest Expos look to end a five-game skid against the North Battleford Beavers. Again, 6:30 game time for that one.